uh, I guess good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I like call and response. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Uh, it's another busy week in the Senate as we continue working on a wide range of issues ahead of the first deadline for bills to pass out a policy committee next Friday. Some of the highlights include the Safe and Supportive Schools Act, the Insurance Fraud Prevention Act, new regulations for dog and cat breeding, and reforms uh, to the Traffic Offense Diversion Program. Uh, the Senate has also considered a number of bills related to the state's $1.2 billion surplus, along with hearing Governor Dayton's recommendations, the Senate Finance Committee passed two uh, bills that would increase the funding levels for budget reserve account, and the HHS Committee looked at rate increase for community-based service providers. Uh, with the Tax Committee holding multiple hearings next week, I think we can expect more of the Senate's priorities for the, suppl uh, for the supplemental uh, coming to focus very soon. It's encouraging to see the conversation at the, cap at the Capitol Senate on priorities like tax relief, bolstering the budget reserves. These are the priorities we share uh, <clears throat> in the Senate, and we look forward to working with the governor and our colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, on our progress and make smart decisions for Minnesota's future. Briefly looking uh, ahead to next week, we plan to have a session on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Expect full committees ahead of the first deadline in particular. I know the tax committee, the tax committee is going to get going on Monday to work on their bill. I'd like to defer to Senator Scoey to talk about that. Well, well thanks, Jeff. And, and as I was walking in, I was telling the speaker that I'm, at noon today I'm going to have a root canal done on one of my teeth. and. Compared to what I've been doing this week, I'm really looking forward to it. So, <laughs> um, uh, Jeff covered pretty much some of the highlights for the week. Uh, let me just briefly mention the work that the Finance Committee did yesterday. I think it's important that we start taking a look at a mechanism for determining the level, uh, the appropriate level for the state's reserves. Uh, the proposal that we're working on now takes into account the volatility of the tax rate, has the MMB working to determine a percentage of the overall general fund level that we have in the state to set a target number for reserves. Uh, no actual requirement to meet that because if you have economic downtown downturns, you do want to have flexibility to be able to use those dollars, but it is a goal and a target. We also are putting a mechanism in place or proposing to put a mechanism in place that would transfer some of the dollars in surplus years into the reserve account so we would actually have some expectation over time that we're going to reach that goal. Uh, the other uh, area that uh, Jeff mentioned is the tax committee. We do have a relatively aggressive uh, hearing agenda scheduled out for next week. Uh, it's going to be posted this morning and so we're going to work through the issues that we feel are important to, to include in any tax proposal to see if we can make some improvements to what the good work the House has done, and uh, hopefully by the end of the week our goal is to have that off the Senate floor. So we'll see how the week progresses, but that's kind of what we're shooting for at this point. Thank you. I hope that root canal goes well. <laughs> uh, we've had another productive day, uh, or excuse me, productive week in the House, uh, and uh, we did uh, pass a couple of bipartisanly supported, bipartisan supported, thank you, um, on session bills, one on higher ed, one on military affairs uh, this week, and uh, we also did, with bipartisan support, the school lunch bill. Uh, shout out to Representative Seltzer on that, and that, of course, means that no kid gets to turn down any more uh, chicken a la king or chicken fried steak, one of my favorites, in the hot lunch line when I was a young kid. That's right. Um, uh, so, And I know uh, this is a bill that's really important to both the governor and Senator Hayden as well, so I feel optimistic about its future. Uh, we also made headway this week on the Women's Economic Security Act. Uh, those bills are moving their way through the process, getting a great hearing. I was a little disappointed that one of my Republican colleagues uh, compared uh, the work on this piece of legislation as whining. Um, too often when women have asserted themselves uh, in uh, the workplace or in uh, issues of equal pay or comparable worth, uh, we've been um, labeled with names like whiner. Um, and I think when women earn 80 cents on the dollar uh, to men, it's important for us to pay attention to that as policymakers. And so I am really delighted with my colleagues, both men and women in the House, that are moving this package forward. Uh, Senator, or excuse me, Representative Moline, of course, is the chief author of that piece of legislation, and it will continue to proceed through uh, the legislature. 
Um, it is uh, spring. You can feel it. Um, you can also feel the pace here. Our members are working very hard. We will be on the floor next week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. But largely our week, our week will be spent in committees as we're processing bills and making our way through this legislative session. Um, well, looking ahead to next week, um, you know, we are uh, hopeful that we will uh, move forward on middle class tax relief. Uh, and uh, move that through the legislature next week. Uh, the governor's been fairly clear about that, and I'm um, pleased with um, uh, the remarks of Senator Scoy as well uh, and the work, you know, hard work they're going to do next week around that issue. Uh, we did have a productive meeting um, last uh, earlier this week, uh, and I'm, I feel optimistic that we're going to be able to move ahead uh, with that uh, tax bill next week. Uh, and it is important, and it's important that we get it done. Um, later today, we're going to release uh, on the House side our budget priorities. Uh, they'll largely follow the uh, vision you know, put forth in the governor's supplemental budget. Uh, we'll be focused on ways uh, to continue to build on Minnesota's uh, momentum and continue growing our economy for the middle class. Um, you know, we've been moving at a very fast pace. I expect that's going to continue uh, next week as well. Okay, thank you. Um, oh. <laughs> Senator Swain, just a little bit more detail on the schedule for the FAST Committee. Are you going to meet every day? Uh, we're starting, uh, we run a division that carries some of the reform issues, so some of the stuff that we're working on is reform, so we have to work in concert with that. Uh, Monday morning we're going to start at 8 o'clock uh, in full committee. The division is going to meet after that before session. Uh, Tuesday we're scheduled to start at 8 o'clock, and then uh, we are also scheduling a Wednesday meeting. Uh, I would like to think that we would have time to be wrapping this up by the end of the week. Wrapping up the committee or on the floor? I'm not in charge of the schedule of the Senate floor, but I think the tax work will be done. Senator Scott, you mentioned uh, that you want to improve the House bill. What does that mean? Well, the House sent over a, a tax cut bill and a conformity bill that I think is important. I've always thought a conformity was important. Uh, but there might be ways to make improvements to it. Uh, we're potentially looking at if there's a way to reduce the cost. Um, but uh, it's uncertain at this time if we're going to be able to accomplish that. We did receive the bill this week, so we know exactly what's in it now. We've got the spreadsheets from the governor's proposal and the House proposal, and we're working on the Senate proposal. And are you still saying no second tax cut bill? Uh, I've never said that there's not going to be another tax bill. I said tax cut bill. Well, all your, uh, you told me my that all the tax cuts will be in the first bill. Well, the Senate was has been reluctant to go quite as far as the House and the Governor with regard to some of these sales tax reductions, and my expectation would be that our caucus would not be looking at that in a second bill. It doesn't mean that there won't be some in there. Maybe there's some property tax relief that Minnesotans would be looking forward to. So I, I'm hesitant to draw lines in the sand when I don't know what the proposals are. But uh, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Are you, are you there on the repeal of the business to business taxes? We're working on that pretty well, yeah. So will there be business to business, uh, those business to business repeal in your bill? All right. Back by Wednesday or Thursday, you guys will know that. You don't know that yet? I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> well, once you say that out loud in front of you guys, then you're pretty well committed to that. I've got a meeting with all the Senate Dems, and, and I'm meeting with the tax committee members to see where they're at on these things. Uh, I like to make sure that uh, I have caucus support for positions that I'm taking and uh, particularly with the members of my committee. Uh, the Senate operates on a committee process. We have committees on committees, and uh, chairs don't get to just say what they want to do and then follow through with it. We actually bring our members along and make sure that they're willing to vote for the proposals. And until I know that I have support in the committee, I'm not going to say that it's going to happen. What's your personal preference? You know, I'm a pretty independent guy, and when I did my listening sessions up in my district this year, and I actually got off the radio with a number of folks from my district, uh, Bemidji, went out, Bemidji, Detroit Lakes, Foston, and Ada, 
And most of the folks that I talked to didn't want a repeat of what happened in the 2000s. They think that if the state's economy is doing a little better than we expected, that we ought to put some of it in a rainy day fund. And so that is my priority. Now the rest of it underneath that, I'm not strongly committed one way or the other. But I do think that is really important. Senator, just, just to that point, just briefly, you know, one of the things we've been hearing a lot is this idea of giving it all back. Um, I think if you run those to, to exactly to Senator Scoy's point, after you take away the $100 million plus in spending that the Republicans are already proposing to do, um, the rest of it give it back, you essentially eliminate not just the, def the surplus this year, but you likely go into deficit in the out biennium. Uh, and so I think that's an important consideration and something that's worth asking folks about as they continue to make that claim. Senator Hayden, can you give us a little better idea of when the tax bill may end up on the floor since you're you currently outrank Senator Scoy? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that I'd outrank <laughs> Senator Scoy. You know, I haven't uh, talked to um, Senator Bach uh, about our schedule and when that happens. I know that it is a um, a pretty dynamic situation. And Senator Scoy, as he's just said, goes through the committee process. So I think that you've heard what his goals are. And so I think soon after the tax committee uh, has done their work, then we have a priority of getting it through. But I don't think we want to commit to what, first of all, I haven't asked uh, what the schedule uh, would be. And secondly, I don't think we knew. We, we, we have a goal of getting it out as soon as possible. We don't know until the tax committee uh, has done the work. Do you guys think that you will meet the governor's <clears throat> new deadline? Of the night, excuse me, of the nineteenth, and uh, I mean, m my question is, if you, if you get it off the floor late next week, obviously it's not going to be identical to the house. Um, so then, is there a conference committee, or do you expect them to concur, or how how does that happen? You know, I'm going to just say that you know our priority is to. Um, is to get the work done uh, as soon as we can. But as Senator, and I'm going to defer to Senator Scoy on some of the technical aspects of conference and deferring and, and that kind of thing. So I think he, he understands that much better than I. But I just want to say overall, we really want to move forward. But we want to move forward in a, uh, and, and at the pace that I think Senator Scoy has talked about, making sure that we take a look at the, all of the, the intricacies of uh, how this is going to work. But I think the goal and the value is to move this forward uh, at a pace that makes sense for our members so that we can get the support that we need to pass the bill. Mr. Speaker, Majority Leader, do you have thoughts about whether you'd need a conference committee given what you've heard is the outlines of the Senate tax bill? And are you frustrated that it's taken them quite a bit longer than it took you to pass this off the floor? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, we'll be happy to get a tax bill done next week. We obviously don't know what's in the tax bill, so it's hard to hard to say how that how that plays out. What, would you do you have a sense of urgency about getting it, if it goes to conference committee, getting it done quickly there? No, of course. Mr. Speaker, sorry, go ahead. If you fall. No, go ahead. Uh, I want to ask about medical marijuana. Does this have any uh, movement in the House and Senate? After what Governor Dayton said yesterday, you know we um, we spent about t two weeks working with uh, law enforcement and advocates and others, uh, trying to find a place of compromise, um, and um, including many of the things that have been talked about in the last couple of days, we are unable to get there. Um, and uh, you know, so I'm not sure that I'm not sure. You know, th that's kind of the evidence that I have about the, the prognosis. Um, if there's additional work that can be done, however, uh, and uh, more folks that want to engage in it, you know, th it, uh, that's another that's a whole other issue. And you know, I, good luck to everybody. But uh, we've seen, you know, we've worked pretty hard to reach a compromise, and we haven't been able to get there yet. If a compromise comes up after Friday's deadline, would you be accept? Would you accept? bring the bill up, or would you say it has to meet next Friday's deadline? You know, that's a, that's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, um, uh, you know, I, this has not been the top priority in the session. We've said that from the very beginning. Um, and um, so, I, you know, hopefully that we can, if we're going to get something done, we'll be able to move it quickly. Um, it is an issue that's important to Minnesotans, and ultimately, if we're going to, you know, move past deadline, that's going to require buy-in from the legislature, from the rules committee, and from others to move it through the process another way. So I don't want to, you know, I never want to rule anything out, but um, it's if we're going to reach a compromise, we need to, to move on it. What's your guys' personal stance on it? I mean, how would you vote if it came up? So I voted in 2009 for a much more limited version of. 
the medical marijuana bill than is presently in the form that Representative Moline has it. Uh, so I, I've, I've already taken that vote. And I, I want to say that, you know, the governor has raised a couple of issues, and, and I do think it is useful um, to broaden the discussion. The discussion thus far has been a lot about law enforcement's objections, but there are health components related to this, obviously, um, as we learn from Minnesotans about the relief that they are, are looking for uh, with medical marijuana. It's something I've supported in the past, uh, but there isn't a lot of um, FDA-supported evidence um, we have a lot of evidence from Minnesotans about their experience. Um, so I do think it is fruitful uh, and probably not possible to get this conversation done yet this session, but fruitful to have a broader discussion about the impact, the medical uh, evidence, the, the medical um, and health care provider element of this discussion. And not a lot of that has happened yet this session. And there may be a more fruitful discussion that happens after session and into next year that could yield a better outcome on this issue for Minnesota. Yeah. Well, I, just, I, I, you know, when I was in the House of Representatives, I voted for the bill uh, as well. That was scaled down. I really want to say that the words that Majority Leader Murphy, I think, is important that the conversation has been really scoped from a from a law enforcement perspective, which I think is very important, but that just is one side of the the the, the ledger here that says that people were going to abuse and do things that law enforcement would be concerned about, which I think is important. But I do think we need to look at it from uh, a provider perspective of what it does and where the research is at and what ailments does it really, is it really effective from the you know, the Charlotte's Web kind of piece for, you know, the baby. We've all seen you guys have covered for children with seizures to people who have MS and, you know, end stage or late stage cancer that uh, allows them to live a better life. The last thing I'll say, because uh, my wife and my father both uh, would get after me because they work in chemical dependency, is we also need to invite that community in to have a conversation about this ideal of abuse or gateway drug or what are the kind of things that they see in the facilities that they work at uh, with, especially with young people, but others about the combination um, around marijuana. And though I know it, it doesn't particularly affect the ideal of medical marijuana, but I think it's important for us to have a holistic and robust conversation about this and not simply just the idea of the potential of abuse or somebody doing something wrong. The House leaders, the, the senators have stressed that they worked very hard to get to 950 on minimum wage. Your conferees have insisted they need indexing. Are you willing to let a minimum wage die at 950 if you don't get indexing? Uh, I don't think a minimum wage is going to die, and the conferees are continuing to work, and I'm optimistic we're going to get a bill. And on indexing? Do you need that? The conferees are continuing to work, and I think we are going to get a bill that everybody uh, can support. Could you support a bill without indexing? Again, I think the conferees are working at it, and I think it's counterproductive for uh, anybody to weigh in on that aren't part of the conference committee. Is there any progress being made? From what I understand, there is progress being made, and they're continuing to have conversations. Speaker Thiessen, you talked about uh, the priority not being medical marijuana. Another thing that's not being talked about as a priority is MSOP, but there are some in the community that think that should be a priority based on the judge's decision last month. Uh, is anyone in the House considering trying to get something done so the courts don't take that over? Um, well, as, as you all know, we have been, uh, there have been meetings going on for several months now trying to come up with a compromise. Uh, I think that the um, important point here is, is that if, we are, if, if it is actually true to be the case, as some are claiming, that there are, are alternative policy differences between um, where the, the Senate position is and the House Republicans are, uh, you can't have alternative policy differences until you actually have a policy on the table. And we've seen nothing from the House Republicans that anywhere close to a, a policy proposal. So I await, I await that. Do you need House Republicans involved? Don't you have enough votes to pass something yourself? For something that's important as this, you, we do need bipartisan support. Why? because it is a, an issue that is a kind of fundamental public safety, uh, an issue that is very um, important to the people of Minnesota that we get it right. And, uh, you know, what you hear from the other side repeatedly is on issues like that. We need to kind of come together around it. So we do need bipartisan support. Democrats can't get it right by yourselves? 
Here's, here's one more element I think we should consider and why it's important to have bipartisan support. Um, as we watched um, Governor Dayton wrestle with this last year, um, it is uh, when people choose to politicize this issue, um, it sends a mixed message to Minnesotans. And because we need to make sure Minnesotans are confident in the decisions we're making, we need to make sure Democrats and Republicans together are agreeing on the public policy so that Minnesotans have confidence in the decision we're making that it's the best public policy. And it really does mean hands off on the politics. And we need to make sure we have that agreement going forward. Do you endanger, or do you, do you bring up the possibility that the judge will take over the program if you don't do anything this year? <laughs> you know, I think that, you know, the judge has um, set forth the process right now to do some analysis, and I think that's a good step. So you don't think that the judge would take it over before next session, then? Is that, are you betting on that? No, I mean, I don't think anybody's betting on anything here. Um, you know, it would be, if we could come to some kind of, by, you know, consensus around this bill, um, you know, that, that is one question. But the, I think the judge has laid out also that he's taking a very... Um, a comprehensive and close look at this on a very individualized basis. Uh, I think that that's the appropriate direction for him to go, and um, you know we'll you know kind of be continuing to monitor that. But um, I don't think anybody knows what the you know that the that the court is going to kind of just step in and take over the program, and I I don't know that that really is in fact the next step. I'm confused, you know, but I mean the judge has kind of indicated that hasn't he that he's willing to start taking action here, but you're suggesting the fear of political retribution is is more important than what's going on with what the judge could potentially do? I don't think Representative Murphy said anything about political retribution. I'm sure I'm clear because she was saying if this doesn't have bipartisan support that you all can't move forward. And if you all don't move forward, then the judge may have to act, which means some of these guys could be out on the street. What, what I said was I think that for Minnesotans to have confidence in the decision, everyone has to step back away from the politics. We have to agree to that. Not that there's political retribution, um, but f for Minnesotans to have confidence, if one voice um, wants to make pol political hay out of the issue, it's going to send a mixed message to Minnesotans. So I think we have a job together to do in the legislature. Well, are, are you going to do that job then? Because as Tom just said, and what the judge said, it's a real possibility that the judge is going to take over the program and one of the options, though extreme, could be to release people. So um, what do you plan to do specifically to make sure that doesn't happen? The judge has said that he wants to do some analysis of uh, where people are right now in the process and I think that that's going to move forward and we're going to continue to work with the Republicans to make sure that we have a path moving forward, though I'm not sure it's going to happen this session. As I have talked with my Republican colleagues, and as Representative Liebling has talked with our Republican colleagues, they have been in the House a little um, unwilling to step forward and work together with us on this issue. And you've talked personally to the Republican leaders? On that? I have. Can I ask about how voting? The bill's up in committee today. Does this have any chance of becoming a law? Your committee. I think it's in Senate Judiciary. It's in Latz's committee today. But um, I want to ask the leaders whether or not this is juice. You so I, I hadn't, as you know, that I didn't track every single bill that's going on. So um, I think that they'll have a really robust conversation about this issue. Um, it's something that is, you know, we have not had a broader caucus conversation about it, so I can't give you kind of how my caucus is feeling about it individually. It just has not gotten to that point. I can tell you personally, and I've said it before, I've said it to you, that it isn't a time that's a really uh, important issue. I think that uh, we need to be able to make sure that as people leave the institution and pay their debt to society that they get full recognition uh, in our society and voting is one of those issues um, and disproportionately unfortunately a lot of those folks look like me so um, you know it's personal for me that we do uh, the right thing by folks but once again I think that the committee will kind of vet that and walk through it um, I know there's a lot of champions no pun intended on that committee that will help us through that process and then we just have not had the the caucus conversation about that yet so i can't tell you uh you know where it goes from there if it makes it out of the committee what's unfortunate about looking like you 
Uh, <laughs> 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 about a big guy. Uh, uh, <laughs> Senator Hayden, you had an amendment put on the 5% bill that yesterday yep. um, for, for nursing homes to be included in getting a wage assistance. First of all, is this going to be the bill, do you think, that passes, that goes into the finance bill? And secondly, I'm just curious how the wage difference may differ from your district to Senator Scoy's district in nursing homes, if you can... Can help me with that. Well. Yeah, well, I think you know we're 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 walking those packages through, and they'll you know start to end up in finance. And as things come together, we'll see how that works. You know, we um, have had a strong uh, desire in in, in, uh, in both houses, as well as the governor raising the minimum wage. And as you guys know, um, a lot of the state's nursing home rates that uh, we are tied to the Medicaid rate, and 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 so therefore we wanted to ensure that if that goes through, and we're still in, as, as the speaker said, we're in the, in, in negotiations, fruitful negotiations. But as we anticipate us moving forward with the minimum wage, we wanted to make sure that we didn't hamstring. Um, uh, uh, nursing home providers, our long-term care providers, um, with uh, the amount of, with, with the rate that we're paying them. So we wanted to try to make the rate commiserate in anticipation of what the minimum wage would be. Um, frankly, um, I think Senator Scoy could also speak to this. That um, I think that especially in uh, Greater Minnesota, um, there is uh, less. Uh, opportunity. There's less uh, long-term care facilities, and we wanted to make sure that they were able to continue to survive and and work. And we wanted to make sure that um, they could uh, provide the care in the setting that people uh, grew up in, lived in, uh, that they feel comfortable in. So that's just the real value statement. It's a little fluid because we still have to kind of button up some of these things as we roll towards the end of session. So I can't tell you exactly how it's going to work. Do you know how much? Nurses make or or employees make in your nursing homes in your area? You know, I I I, I don't. I, I would say no. I mean, I would say that I know that I, I, I wouldn't want to answer that because I wouldn't want to give you a wrong number, but I know that there's some disparities between what folks make in the metro and greater Minnesota. Senator Scoy knows in his district. Well, well, Don, I don't know exactly what there is for a nursing pay because there's LPNs and RNs and then there's aides and all the other support staff in a nursing home. The concern with regard to this issue, as uh, Senator Hayden said, is that we are tied to they're tied to our level of reimbursement. And so if we're going to add costs to them, we're going to have to figure out a way to mitigate those costs. And as you guys all know, we've said this so many times, the demographics in the state are against us. Our, some areas of the state are aging populations. We're going to need more opportunities for long-term care. We're going to need more flexibility with regard to what we offer. Uh, we should be trying, striving to make sure that those institutions are financially strong. So as this moves forward, we're going to look at it in, in that regard. I want to say one other thing about these past questions. From my perspective, the priority of the session was to do a bonding bill to resolve what we're going to do with the uh, sales tax that went into place, do conformity, and those were the priorities. We needed to balance our, you know, make sure the budget was balanced last year. We did that. We did good policy with it, set the state up for a strong financial future. Now we have some uh, opportunities to make a few fixes. We should do that. But primarily we should focus on the investment that we're doing in our state. And uh, hopefully we can get out of here early. Senator, I, I this, is, this is supposed to be a bonding session, but we haven't, uh, do you have any idea what the bonding schedule is? We haven't seen the bonding. You know, I don't, other than I've talked to Senator Stump, and I know he's working hard, but, you know, you guys think about the bonding as a process. The House comes out with their proposal. The governor has his bill. The Senate comes out with theirs. There's probably 25 to 30 percent of the projects that are, that are the same in all three of those areas. So then they have to sort out between the three proposals and you're going to get out get rid of probably 65 percent of those. The the needs way uh, out uh, way the what we have available. Lots and lots of good projects. I, I'm sure that Senator Stumpf and Representative Hausman are working on this. I know that their committees held lots of hearings and trips through the summer but uh, for me I'm trying to focus on these things and uh, uh, you know try to narrow up the agenda a little bit. I know I have 200 colleagues and 
we all have ideas that we think are extremely important, but let's focus in on the real purpose of the session this year.